actually, so we only moved in last week. This is, uh, this is the new operations center for Follow the Sun, where we start in November, where Canberra will control Goldstone and Madrid antenna during daylight hours, and that'll rotate, so they'll control ours during the night time. So, so we're going to be getting a lot more console. So it looks nice and airy, but it will be filled in the coming weeks. Now, uh, the teams, we'll have teams of five. Oh, this is my desk. Oh, so it's a new desk. It's, it's a very special desk. It's a, <laughs> it has lots of screens. <laughs> so, so essentially, this uh, also allows me to interface with our flight systems as well. Uh, so I can, from here, call up anything on the, the other workstations. Uh, if, if, you, if you pan around, essentially, each workstation here so of can incorporate uh, two antenna. So we can have one, one of our controllers controlling Deep Space Station 35 and 34 at the same time. So it could be Mars, it could be, you know, in the case of what we're tracking now, we're tracking uh, on Deep Space Station 43, Voyager 2. And uh, so on Deep, Deep Space Station 34, we're, we're tracking wind as well. Uh, so as the day goes on, we'll, we have the Mars rising, and I'll, I'll show you the schedule that we have. So, so, this, so this is our tracking schedule at the moment, so you'll, you'll hear some noises at the back, they're just doing testing. Uh, so everything in green is essentially what's being supported now. Deep Space Station 43 is tracking Voyager 2, there was a command uplink as well, and as we just described earlier, so we did the best lock frequency and, and transmitted a number of no-op commands to the spacecraft as well. Uh, wind, and uh, they were dumping as well, so wind has two downlink channels, essentially modulated on the same carrier, but they have uh, engineering and essentially engine and scientific data. So we have two receivers in lock. We have a high rate, 144 kilobits, and then we have a, a lower rate, which is just seven kilobits for the engineering. Uh, 36 and 35 are on maintenance at the moment. And really that sort of sets us up as the day goes on. So he starts hitting the Mars missions. Mars rises here, so actually probably in the next hour or so, but it's a little bit longer that we start picking up our first spacecraft on Mars, which is MAVEN, MV MVN. And then we start MER-1, so opportunity as well, so we still communicate with the, uh, with, with the rover. And the rover is an unusual one so on how we communicate with it, because it uses the relay spacecraft most of the time. So all the vision that you see is through the, uh, the relays, but, but we do command directly. And so uh, what we do is we'll send a command sequence, and then we listen. Round trip light time. We, we get a happy beep or a sad beep. <laughs> so at the moment, this is uh, showing the Voyager 2. This is the downlink system. And we have 10 downlink channels that we can use. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a resource uh, so that we can pick for, for anything. So some spacecraft might need one receiver, some might need two, some possibly might need three. So this is uh, what we're using here. This is downlink channel number three. The signal comes into the IF here, and this is our carry lock. We're in lock, that's great. Gives us a frequency, 8420 megahertz. Power on the carrier, a negative 159. So it's huge. So that's a big signal level. It, de it depends. Uh, so if, if you're looking at MAVEN on the low gain antenna, and even though you, s you look at, at Mars, that could be 10 dB low. So it really depends on the purpose of the spacecraft and, and what they're trying to get down. Voyager, as I said, has a, a great big high gain antenna. It has a, a 20 watt transmitter, which doesn't seem huge, but sort of, uh, it, it, it seems to be ample for what we need. Uh, so the 158 is fairly good. Carrier residual. Now, this is not, at the moment we're not coherent, which means that this, the spacecraft is using its USN. Uh, it's, it's, it's an ultra-stable oscillator, mm -hmm. so it's its own time reference. But even over 15 billion kilometers, we're only 183 hertz out. That's crazy. So, so yeah, so predicted, we're pretty well bang on. 
uh, the one way indicates the mode, so which is essentially non-coherent. If we were two-way, that means that the spacecraft is turning around our signal, and what we're receiving is reference to our uplink. Uh -huh. So as we raise the uplink, the downlink will rise as well. The two are the, the two are linked, and the reason why we do that is for Doppler. So we know if, if there's a fixed ratio on the spacecraft, and we're transmitting a frequency, and the frequency we're receiving, if it's not exactly right, it must be the result of Doppler. And based on that, we can say, OK, the spacecraft is traveling at a velocity of x meters per second. Signal noise temperature, oh, it's a hot one, 19 Kelvin. <laughs> so that, which is a really good, uh, that's probably about the standard. We get about 17 lowest. Uh, so a little bit of cloud, so, but not too much. So 18 Kelvin. If it rained now, uh, that would just start to bang, 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 bang. So, so that can go all the way up to 130 and to the point where it wipes out the signal. Mm. Subcarrier, a little 20, 22 and a half K subcarrier. So it's stripped off, the symbols are stripped off. And there you go, we were saying we double, double the symbols to get the bit rate, so with the, with the encoding method, it's MCD 1, 2. Symbol SNR is 7, 7.1, which is about the same as my ADSL modem. Right. So if, um, okay. I'm three and a half K away. Yeah. So symbol to noise ratio, that, so it, we go, OK, that's the symbols done. So this is RF. By the time we hit our telemetry system, we're converting bits. It gets pumped into MCD, which is a multi-convolutional decoder. And that's the forward error correction we were using. And suddenly, our simple SNR of 6.7 turns into 9.83, which is a 3 dB, which is a doubling that we get with that, with that uh, encoding method. Frame sync here. So I said, just like any other data, so if, uh, it's packaged up. And there's a frame sync word at the beginning of the packet. So what this does, it looks for that frame sync word. It said, OK, frame sync word. The frame is this length of time and just chops it up into packets. And from there, we have the formatter where it's sent over to JPL. Really, so that's about as much as we see as far as the telemetry processing. We know I'm have, we're having blocks leaving. This is our spectrum display here. And so uh, we're seeing a very tiny Voyager 2 signal sitting in the middle. So what else we get from it? So obviously, the Doppler that we're receiving here is being fed through as well as tracking data. And uh, that tra tracking data is, as I said, used to uh, to them velocity as well, subtle changes. And, and when, when we're talking about changes, we're talking about uh, fractions of hertz mm -hmm. and th that are being measured. Uh, this is uh, our antenna here, our display. So this is our performance display. So we know exactly where it's pointed. It gives us an azimuth and elevation, 219 and 53. Uh, so we've, we go down and, you know, everything is milli degrees here. So we're not talking degrees, we're talking milli degrees. Uh, so, uh, uh, and in fact, it, uh, tenths of milli degrees. Uh, the accuracy, so especially when you start to expand, so it, it's fairly tight uh, as far as a bore site. The higher fre the frequency you go, obviously the, the narrower the beam. Uh, 43 is different from all the others. It's, it's a huge antenna. And, and if you look at it, so if, as far as beam width, if, if one edge moves off bore site by more than a, a couple of centimeters, then you start losing it. So ac accuracy is essentially ultim ultimately what you want. So we have encoders that give a position Essentially, they're, they're little more than wheels. But then this one also has an autocollimator as well, which is something quite different. Parks has one similar. Uh, essentially, it's a, an hour angle and deck antenna within an antenna. So sitting up on the top of the instrument tower in between the, the elevation axis, there's essentially a robotic arm. It's an hour angle and deck. But instead of an antenna dish, it has a laser. So this 8,000 ton antenna it's slaved to essentially a laser, so which is a, another level of accuracy again. So, so these are probably 
with, with it, without doubt, the most accurate antennas in, on the planet. So, and you know, we have dedicated engineers purely calibrating the antenna on a regular basis to make sure it, it it's it's bang on. Daily, weekly, uh, monthly. So, let's say the, the, the specs. If he's more than uh, two or three milli degrees out, he's chastising himself. What this does show quite effectively is uh, this is X-band, so it doesn't doesn't show the transmitter. Uh, this is our, our, our uh, essentially our input to our receivers. It shows the horn here. What you're seeing there is uh, is a rain blower, and it sounds kind of crude, so uh, considering the hardware we have. But uh, with it, with X-band, you do have the issue with water pooling on on uh, the cone window. So there's a little blower that just makes sure that that doesn't settle. It comes in, it goes into a diplexer. And what a diplexer does is simply allows us to receive and transmit at the same time. We're not using the transmitter at the moment on the X-band because this is an S-band uplink on Voyager 2. It comes through and then we have a fixed polarizer where essentially the combined downlink is separated to a right-hand circular polarization and a left. Voyager is left-hand circular, so that comes through and goes into our receivers, and that ties in with with our receiver over here, and that's where it's introduced to the receiver. Why is the power level different on there to what we're seeing on the screen here? Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. No. Minus 152. Yeah. And minus 159. Yeah. So. Why is it different? I have a feeling so. It's all AGC. And I don't think, I think what you're seeing there is not exactly right. So where, let's just say I'd assume my systems are right. Yeah. So we're going to assume that that one is correct. Yes. Yep. Minus 159. Yep. Okay. 152, I'd be jumping up with joy and I'd think, oh my God, it's turned around heading back. <laughs> <laughs>